welcome back to my channel. With the pandemic, shortages of ingredients like flour and yeast, and now rising inflation, I've learned to get more savvy with the way I bake to save money and resources. By making most of my food from scratch, I already save thousands of dollars per year, but here are some additional ways in which I stretch my dollar and ingredients. I'd also love to hear your tips, so please share in the comments. Number one. I don't discard my starter. This trick alone has probably helped me save hundreds of dollars in flour. Don't believe those lies that you have to discard your starter. The whole idea of discarding completely turned me off to sourdough because it seemed so wasteful. I'll link my videos on how to make a starter from scratch without ever discarding and how I maintain my starter in the description box. Number two, I don't buy yeast packets. Sure, a few dollars for three little yeast packets doesn't seem like much, but you're paying two to four dollars per ounce of yeast. That's up to $64 per pound. Instead, I buy yeast in one pound bags, which are usually less than $10. I store it in the freezer in these Talenti containers and use only a little bit at a time. My recipes usually call for just a quarter or one teaspoon of yeast. One pound of yeast lasts me well over a year, and it works just as well as the first day I bought it. Number three, my freezer is my best friend. I freeze about everything I can to avoid waste. For instance, I almost never finish a whole container of sour cream. Instead of throwing the rest away, I just put it in the freezer. I also stock up on staples at discount stores, but they are usually close to their expiration date, so I have to freeze them right away. My favorite staples to freeze are butter, heavy cream, sour cream, and believe it or not, flour. Of note, for heavy cream and sour cream, the consistency does change a bit after freezing, but they work perfectly well in baked goods. Number four, I make my own vanilla extract. Store-bought vanilla extract is so expensive and usually not that good. Also, it's easy to go through a lot since it's used in so many recipes like cookies, cake, quick breads, and frosting. I make my own by slicing vanilla beans lengthwise so the seeds are exposed and I just let it sit in vodka for a few months until it takes on a nice brown color. I then transfer some to a smaller jar for easier pouring and then refill the mason jar with more vodka. Vanilla beans aren't cheap, but you don't need the highest quality vanilla beans for this. Number five, I think of heat from my oven as a resource and I try to avoid wasting it. When my oven is on, I do as much of my baking or roasting at the same time or sequentially instead of using extra energy to heat up the oven again later on. For instance, if I'm using the oven to bake two trays of cookies, I'll roast veggies as soon as the cookies are done while the oven is still hot. If you want to bake things at different temperatures but at the same time, figure out which rack in your oven is hotter and use that one for things that you need a higher temperature. As an example, I'll bake dinner rolls on the top rack which is a bit cooler for me, but I roast chicken at the same time on the bottom rack which is hotter. What are your tips for saving money in the kitchen? Please share in the comments so we can all learn from each other. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more easy cooking and baking videos, and say hi in the comments. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.